Welcome to Dialing In. I'm your host, Aaron Powell, and I got Jacob Pomeroy, uh, owner of Cobra Aesthetics Posing, with us today. How are you doing today, Jacob? Not too bad. Just got done working out. Um, yeah. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, it's just been, we just started this as the third episode, I think. Yeah, third episode. <laughs> just kind of talking to people, getting to know them, dealing with the world the way it is now. Uh, your first question I've been asking people is, how's COVID and training and things been for you? <laughs> well, um, glad the gyms are open where I am. Um, it was kind of, I guess, hellacious trying to lift here at, at our house, but I made do with it. Um, you know, had to be very, uh, inventive. If, so, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, basically for me, um, you know, I dealt with it pretty well, um, you know, being that I had to lift here, still stayed on track. Um, I you, was, I was, what? No, I was going to say, did you have any show plans for this year that they got fouled with COVID or were you uh, off season? No. Days? Yeah. So, yeah. So I've been off season for, and I was, I was going to get to that. So, um, I've been off season since about 2018. Um, I'm I'm very upfront about it. Like after after I competed in 2018, I, I kind of fell off track. Uh, got with my coach uh, Brian Berkland. You know he, um, you know basically we got back on track right around June ish. Um, and basically with that, you know, uh, I really wanted to you know set things straight for the end of 2022. Um, we've been doing a long cut. Um, and we're about to, you know, up food from there and kind of just start packing on muscle. Nice. So, nice. Any show planned for 2022 yet? Or are you just waiting to see what it's just, like and go from there? Well, I mean, so my, my plans are actually to move down to Florida. So, which we all know Florida is pretty much like a, one of the main bodybuilding hubs down there. So for, for my business, that'll kind of be a good thing. Um, but we'll see, um, as far as like surrounding states or, you know, as far as, um, you know, shows, we'll, we'll kind of see what's around there. Might travel a little bit. Um, but because I'm a natural bodybuilder, um, you know, I'm willing to travel. So. Yeah. There's a lot of good natural shows out in Florida. What part of Florida are you thinking about? Um, so we're wanting to stay right around like Orlando. Um, I think it's, Kissimmee, Kissimmee, Kissimmee. I don't know. Everybody says it differently. Yeah, you know, Kissimmee. Um, maybe, maybe Lakeland. Um, that's where me and my wife have been looking at. But nice. There. I've been to both. Actually, uh, been to Lakeland many of times. Had friends and family there, and uh, lived in Miami for many years myself. So know that bodybuilding is a very big part of Florida. So it's it's kind of nice. Kinda, moving out here to Colorado is one of those things that I uh, have to say I, I miss being able to be like an hour away from like any show that I want to go to see that's pretty close like and every weekend there's shows during season down there between natural and NPC shows like you really could go to a show every weekend and just have fun just going to shows if you really want to it's kind of nice so yeah well and for me like I basically told my wife I'm like I want to be within like 30 minutes of a good gym like not not just a like your your anytime fit, like a good gym <laughs> and within at least a forty five minute drive or something like that of the beach, so or like an hour an hour max. So yeah, that was she she is a die hard like Disney freak. Uh, so not 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 a freak, but she loves Disney. So <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's her thing. So I'm like. She's slowly converting me over, but you know, that's that's her thing. So that's she wants to stay centralized around there. Fair enough. Fair enough. There's a lot of again. Yeah. We're, we're based out of uh, Orlando ourselves. You know, that's where we, we make most of our all our products actually come out of our shop nice. in uh, Orlando. So, you know, ten years later, still going, still loving it there. So um, our production yeah. team, uh, we're actually going to have them on for one of our first ones of uh, next year we're gonna have our production team on and just talk about how we make suits and you know things people should nice. know about suits and i figured you know nobody everybody gets to see me but nobody gets to see the behind the scenes crew of uh muscle potential so it should be kind of fun having them awesome. out and 
people know it's like it's not just me making so you got a whole team of people doing this for you guys so so how did you yeah. start cobra aesthetics what was that how did you start cobra aesthetics so for me i actually started um it all started i guess with in-person training and that's kind of how it started um and then i slowly um going into my second season of bodybuilding um, I started getting a lot more serious about posing and, you know, watching people like Lee Labrada, um, Francis Benfato, uh, people like Ed, Ed Corny, um, you know, all the greats. And for me, that was like, you know, very influential. I've always been creative. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I played guitar, you know, self-taught. Um, I was a percussionist, um, you know, some accolades for that, like, we went to state solo ensemble, got a perfect score as an ensemble. So very, very, very creative throughout my life. Um, and that kind of carried over to um, me being able to, you know, being very observant and picking out all the little things that people don't really see. Right. Um, but essentially going from the, the in-person posing and essentially with my second show or my second season, basically for me, it was, I spent probably like, I started from like the, the, the beginning of my prep working on a, you know, posing routine up until when I competed. Nice. Right. So I was, I was like dedicated to get this posing routine down. So it was like, boom, 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 every single day. So I feel like that kind of like led to me just having like a straight passion for posing and slowly over the years, I've just kind of crafted it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then it's kind of transitioned over to um, basically being, you know, a posing um, based business. Um, and I also do, you know, online prep as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, yeah. with the posing, uh, what do you think are some major, you know, top three major issues with most people fighting? I know there's like a hundred reasons for people, uh, fighting, honestly, but I, I, I was going to say that boiling it down to three, I know can be super difficult because I've seen some really bad poses, but from somebody who teaches and, you know, if you could distill some information to somebody of like what to look for, or even like they don't let's change it. Why they should hire a posing coach, maybe uh, because I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't feel they need. They'll take training and diet and you know everything else, but posing is the one thing I, I can watch. And I you know, always see the the stompers on stage that just get up there and stomp around for thirty seconds, and I'm like, what was that? <laughs> Yeah, very, very robotic. Um, I would say, like, my top three would... The first one, most definitely, which just irritates me, is people who don't know how to sink their hips, right? So it just looks like they're thrusting, right? You got that one. You, you know what I mean? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just, like, straight thrusting, um, which, I mean, you, you sink your hips, you're going to get more lines in your quads, you're going to... You know, everything's an illusion within the sport, right? We're trying to create the V taper. We're trying to create a small waist, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's trying to have no waist. Um, the other one is, uh, I would say, tight traps, mm -hmm. right? So everybody, everybody always, you know, is like this. Yep, drop them down. Right? Box. Yeah, it's just like, okay, you know, if you're going to be like this, like, you might as well just, like, hide, right? Um, and then I would say um, my last one would probably be, ah, okay. Um, so my last one, and I, I have a name for it, is um, it looks like people are grasping Casper, right? So the reason why... If you look at most men's physique or bodybuilders, mm -hmm. they constantly, they're, they don't know how to execute their pose and just hold it, right? So, like, for example, I'm going to get up and show you. 
but essentially like you know if they're like you know they execute and they're just like <laughs> yep right or like I mean, men's physique wind. I like the whirlwind hand I'm like what are you what are you spitting over there like do you have a little what well, it's like they're just they're grasping Casper <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know it's funny I was watching men's physique I'm practicing posing, and I, he did it like four times. And I'm just like every time, especially in men's physique, it it hurt oh, yeah. the most to watch it. But I'm like, you know what? I, I've stopped caring at this point because I'm like, it, it, it's something that I feel like they think it's supposed to be done at this point. It's yeah. done so much, and even with bodybuilding, like you said, with the lats, and you know, I'm like, no, just set yourself and stop yeah. moving. Well, yeah, and no, it's like. It's learn how to execute your pose and just hold the pose. You get so many people who are like, I feel like I need a reset. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like I need a reset. And and it's just like, hold your fucking pose. Let the judges like, say you need to you, Like, I understand if you need a reset because you feel like you're not holding the pose correctly, but you don't need a reset like eight eight times. No. Right? You see that a lot, especially at like the Olympia level too. Like, you guys should be able to, like, hit your pose and then stay there. Like, so the judges can, like, see your pose. Like, if you keep resetting, like, how are they going to critique it? See, one of the things, I, I had an old gym owner back in the day in Massachusetts, Vinny Greco. He, he was a very, like, one of the few, first, actually, the first gym I ever walked into that had a... Um, posing room like an all mirrored room made just for posing love that room like you know he, he would stick you in there and do some things and i remember there was a chair outside of sauna like every time when you go to the men's locker room that was sat that just sat there and i was like what is there a chair there never really could understand it and then when i was getting ready for my first show did that you know went to the posing room and then like 15 minutes in there he's like okay let's go to the next one i was like another posing room and he's like oh, the sauna and so he would stick you in the sauna, turn it on, and he'd sit outside and pull that chair up right by the door. And that was his chair. I learned that at this point. That was his chair to sit and watch you pose. Because he, he always hated people who posed in air-conditioned rooms. Because he's like, it, it's, it's not cold. I mean, it's, it's hot as hell on stage. Those lights are heated up. Oh, yeah. Like, I want you to understand to how to pose with heat. Because that's one thing most people don't get is that it's hot, and when they pose in an air conditioned room versus posing in heat, there are two different levels of comfort now. Because once you get up and try to pose in heat, and you're not used to it, you're like, oh "My gosh, what the hell is going on? I could I could hold this pose for hours." Like, yeah, that was because the room was nice and cool, and like doing it in heat changes the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I would I would also say like people also need to make sure like when they're when they practice their posing, I mean, you pump up pre-stage, correct? Right. So when you practice your posing, you get a decent pump, yeah. right? Um, you know, normally when I try to, I mean, granted, you know, I'm always practicing, mm -hmm. um, so it's not always going to happen, but, like, you know, if you practice, you're done with your workout, you know, mm -hmm. practice your posing. Mm -hmm. However... I do normally recommend that people should practice at both times, you know, when they are flat and when they are pumped up. So then they can see how their muscles look at both times. Yeah, definitely agree on that. It, again, it, it's one of those things, because it, 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 the sport is an illusion. And, and I think that's, you know, as much as everybody thinks, you know, you're just going to get up there and do your thing, you know, it, from how you hold the pose, you know, how, you know, what angles... For a question I don't think I, I know, I always think, is it always great to pose just straight forward? I see some people, like, especially when you're at the ends, you know, they still face dead shit, and it's like, and yes, I know they sometimes will move you, you know, so other judges on one side or the other can see you, and other times they don't. And, you know, I know that some people always want to do the angle in a little bit, you know, type of thing, yeah. and, and it's like... But that might now change how you really look to the judges that are right in front of you. Because now the people who are right in front of you are getting a whole different actual angle of what you look like. Yeah, yeah. So, however, you do always want to, like, if the head judge is right here, mm -hmm. 
if you angle in, you're you're just shifting how you're posing, right? Because he's still gonna see you hitting from this angle, right? I mean, granted, like that person on the far side might see a different side of you, but like if that person on the far side isn't gonna see your chest, no. right? Well, so that's that that's why you have to angle in, nice. right? Because it's like everybody needs to see you, right? Because if um, you know, judge over here, and you're all the way over here, right? They can't see you. Have to. you have to? Yeah, I mean, far, you know, from here all the way to here, you have to angle in, right? That's, I mean, that's that's a given, you know. And people like that's that's why I think there always has to be like athlete meetings. Yeah. Personally, it's like, hey, if you're in the end, rotate in. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Just saying. Especially on this, depending on the stage, especially if you're on different size stages. You know, I've been to some shows where there are humongous stages that guys are on. And, you know, and they still only have five in a lineup, or then they might move to 15. And it's like, wow, this changes a lot of how and where and try, like, what you're trying to actually get in a visual scope of what's happening. You know, I, yeah. I feel like sometimes, too, they should allow, like, even beforehand, let the athletes get on stage just to kind of, at least for them, from that perspective, from the stage out, get an idea of what they're going to see before they just get out there. Because, you know, I, I, not a lot of guys get the chance to walk up on stage until the minute they're walking out on stage. And they just don't... Yeah, for oh. sure. Like, wow, this is a really big stage that I am not used to, you know, especially, again, when you're practicing at home in the mirror or in a little gym and then, a, a, you know, a, a, an aerobic room. There's not a lot of, you know, it's a very tight area that they're used to. And then you just explode it out and people are just like, holy crap, this is really big. Yeah, and see, that's why it's important people also make sure they pose, you know, with a mirror and without. Because then it's like, you know, hey, now I got to do it by feel, mm -hmm. right? People forget that. All the time. I, I, I think that's the one thing I, I think most people are like, I posed great when I was at home looking in the mirror. I was like, yes, because you could see yourself and you can adjust what you need to kind of before you get there. And then as soon as you walk off in stage, they, they quickly, they, they revert because their brain can't see anything and they shut down, I feel. It's like, you got to learn how to pose mentally, like adjusting and knowing how you actually feel and sit. Yeah, it's like, oh, I why why wasn't I turned enough in this pose now? And honestly, sometimes it's one of those things too. It's like it, 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 I remember I was looking at some pictures of a show recently, and the pictures don't always tell the story though. Too just because I remember I was looking at a picture of somebody who was setting into a yeah if they're. Yeah, if, they're, if the person taking the picture is all the way over here, and it's like... That's the thing. Either the angle's off, or they take it too soon. So it's like, you know, they're sitting in for a lat spread, but they hadn't fully extended it. And you can tell, it's like, their back doesn't look like it's fully... It's like, well, again, I always say, maybe they completely agree. They might have not. They could have not all fully, but also, it's not a video. So you don't know where exactly the full end of that extension was. He could have missed it. It could have just been a minute before he actually locked that pose. You know, it's one of those things where I always say, I've done photography work at shows. It's like, I think one thing I think with a lot of photographers, if you don't know how people pose, you know, especially if you're doing a group shot, you're going to always miss somebody, you know, just because it's a big lineup. You, you don't know how to get every single person. But, you know, if it's an individual you know, thing happening, you know, it's like, there's usually at least, it should be a second where you're frozen in that pose at what you're trying to do. Uh, that's that moment you try to get those pictures. Yeah, and the one thing is, like, people, people need to learn to, like, execute their pose like that. Like, I understand you, you have your setup, but also, like, you don't have to be so theatrical and, like, you know, do all these fancy things to like, you know, like if you're, if you're setting up for your, your rear double bicep, you don't have to be like here. <laughs> right. Like do, do that shit during your routine. That's but, fine. But not right? you're just doing your mandatories and they're trying to, they, they want to get in, see your pose and get out. Like, <laughs> right. 
it's like, you know, cool. Whatever. Do that. Do that during your routine. Like act like act a fool oh, during your routine. I've, well, don't act. Well, you know, I've been on stage and I'm sat and this is the first time I'm like, dude, like we have already been up here for 10 minutes. Like let's get this all going. Like you don't need to sit here doing every shot. Like it's going to be some type of theatrical motion. It's like, come on. They just want to see like, these like, poses for this. <laughs> like, like just go full sloth mode. <laughs> You know, and that's why I said that's like you know that's why I really wanted to team up with some posing coaches because that's that thing where I feel in our business of you know posing suits, you know it, it definitely it, I, you you said it before I've seen granny panties I've just seen things falling out you know you know like what is like who you know, it's, it's funny, I just saw somebody that, you know, I had reached out for, and I'm like, hey, you know, let us know if you need new trunks, and he's like, no, good, I got these great ones, and I saw him at the show, and I was just like, you you thought those were great trunks? I mean, those just were the worst thing, and honestly, he ended up placing last in his class, and, I, and, and it was one of those things where I just wanted to be like, you looked good, I think you placed last because of the trunks, like, those were the worst things I've ever seen on any, I mean, they were like a, a combination of like Arnold old style cut, but with really bagginess to them too. So it was like yeah. the worst of both worlds. <laughs> well, like, and it's either like, it's one of those things where it's either like they're way too tight and they don't flow with your, with your waist. Yeah. They're too baggy. Like there are so many factors, but like, a lot of times what I'll see is, like, they're just cinched way too tight. And that's... And I'm just like, they wow. They are, and again, it, it, I feel like for most, it's... Because they don't really go for the measurements. They don't want to go for what you need. You know, they go by, you're a large, medium, or a small, you know. Do you fall in that ballpark? Yes, everybody will eventually be in some range of that. But... Again, bodybuilders have a hard enough time, like I always say, buying clothes, you know, let alone buying something tinier like trunks, you know, and that's why I think the custom fitting of getting something that actually sits on your hips correctly, actually V-tapers oh, yeah. down in shapes versus, you know, I see these some that just go straight across somebody's body, you know, their Adonis belt is like seven inches up above it, and then these trunks are sitting like down and like... Are they falling off you, or like what? What's happening here? It's like why are you split in half of two different people? Uh, on and then you have to keep on pulling them up all the time. And I, I have some people who are like, oh, don't worry, I have bikini bite, and I'm like, well, why do you need bikini bite? Your trunk should fit you. You shouldn't need to have to glue them in place to fit your body. If you're gluing them in place to fit your body, they're obviously not the right size for you, or the way they should fit. you. So, you know, it's like one other thing I like to see is like, when, especially when they're doing their front lap poses, you know, and they want to pull them up to show and they pull them up so much. And all of a sudden, I'm like, now you just threw off all your lines because now your trunks went from like, yes, they were super low. Now they're just weird and super high. And like, it's like you got super like, like a dog and like, <laughs> like his ears are sticking straight up, super happy for no damn reason. I'm like, just leave the, your trunks alone like if they're sitting on your body correctly once it that's all you should do you don't need to pull them you don't need to move them and honestly i know in some organizations i know uh, npc like especially if you do pull them and adjust them they'll actually dock you points oh yeah for adjusting them on stage because i'm like you shouldn't need to if you're pulling and yanking on them you, you did it wrong you know so getting something that actually is contoured and shaped to your body makes it so much easier over time and it just makes your poses, especially when you're doing a routine, flow so much better. You know, as you're moving and the trunks move with you, it's just, wow, this is a great routine. You know, it's those ones that you go, that was a great routine. Everything looked right there. That's, and again, it's honestly been a while since I've seen an amazing posing routine that I just went, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now, what you know with with your business? Do you do only um, in person? Do you do online? Do you do video type things to help people? Yeah. So 
with with mine um i'm slowly kind of shaping it like and with moving to florida too i feel like that'll kind of help shifting it to more in person online um and i want to do a few other things Mm -hmm. but mainly right now like i have people all over the u.s um but i i have worked with i want to say like one or two people in person just because like um they they live really close Mm -hmm. um but i would say like in wisconsin not really i mean it's not not really not really a bodybuilding hub Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Um, but I would say like, you know, mainly online. Um, and then of course with doing, um, you know, just releasing like the peak optimization posing, you know, helping people with the, um, you know, kind of finishing those, those last little critiques during peak week. Um, you know, that's another little thing that I wanted to kind of, um, throw people, um, I don't want to say, um, throw towards people's way, um, you know, to kind of help them, um, Definitely. you know, but yeah, you know, the, the basic thing that I wanted to try to, um, incorporate is just, you know, really trying to focus on getting a mixture of both, um, later down the road, um, because then I will be able to, because of the move. Right. Um, just right, right now it's not really in the books because, you know, a lot of it I'm, I'm literally doing within here. Yeah. That's kind of what we did. You know, it's like, you know, adding video and online stuff, especially with the way the world is at this point helps out a lot. You know, it makes connecting so much easier for people, you know, adding this just for our video consults, you know, they started, you know, we did it only on web versus now we can talk to people and, a, you know, work with them, you know, sometimes see how they're measuring to make sure they're measuring correctly. Same thing for you, seeing how they pose, working with them to see what's going on. You know, it, it, we, we want to see that type of thing more. And I think, you know, the model will be more visual as we move forward, just because the world is a place that not a lot of everybody wants to get in face and person to person right now. And if you do, great. You're there for that too. But it can also expand and open up the business world and the whole world in general, just so you can, again, you're on a phone, I'm on a camera, I'm on a laptop, but it's still the same thing. You can connect and have a way to make things work, you know, nowadays. Uh, so 2022, you think you're going to get back on stage? That's the plan at this point? Yeah, so right now, I'm, so yeah, so right now I'm about 23, I'll be what, 24 in March. Nice. So sitting at about 204 right now. Um, and you know, my goal, I competed at 170 last time. Mm-hmm. Um, probably be right around the same, but I could have, I could have probably lost like another five pounds. Okay. Um, five, six pounds, to tight. be honest. A little harder than the last time you competed. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's why I wanted to, you know, really take a a long off season, really focus on, you know, building my metabolic rate, you know, just really focus on being able to go into this next season and just, you know, kind of, I guess, destroy. (laughs) You know, it's, it's all about progress. It's all about continuing growth, you know, between business and bodybuilding and, just personal growth. Those are like those aspects that you always see amongst everybody who competes because it's just built into the sport. You know, if you're not growing and getting that, then, you know, it's like I always say, those athletes that I see compete every year, several times a year, and they never change to the slight. And again, I'm always like, but what are you getting out of it? Like, and honestly, sometimes they win and it's like you win, but you, you win to the same place. Like locally, you win great. Regionally, you do okay and you might qualify, and then you fail miserably at a higher level. And it's like. Well, and, and the only case is if you are a genetic freak. Correct. Right? That is the only exception. But that is. Know, that is. You should see. Some, that is like. Even then, though, you should see some progress. With a genetic freak, they usually do progress and still look better at 
several times a year throughout that year they will have a great I've seen some guys that literally look like I could take 10 pictures of them from five years and put them all on a table and you'd go what's the difference like there is none there's Ex zero difference in this exactly it, yeah it's, no, but I, 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 I'm in, you know for me I'm taking off, I'm off some time my last show was 2012 you know and, and, and I was hoping to use this year to do something which that did not work out that way <laughs> at all, unfortunately. Yeah, you're, you're just like, oh, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> like it came out of nowhere. You know, my, I'm in my literally my gym closed down the day of my birthday, uh, in March, March 17th. I was just like, this is the worst birthday present ever at this point now, you know. And yeah. I was like, okay, this is what we're doing. So, but you know what though, I used the time wisely. You know, I, I reinvested the time into my business and, you know, came up with this, idea other ideas, the champions program, you know, we, we just used it wisely to invest into, you know, the end half of twenty twenty and hopefully twenty twenty one will be a better year for us all and uh, we'll see how that goes and you know, I just, you know, hoping up these partnerships uh, with you and, you know, uh, some of the champions that we're trying to build, just build the world, the word, spread the word, I should say, about our programs and about just having a good product and, you know, good customer service and just letting athletes know, you know, it's not a one size fits all world. And, even with posing, it's not a one way to do the pose type thing. You know, somebody's physique could look you know, better holding it one way versus another, preferably. Because I think yeah. body size and shape, if you're smaller and tinier, you might do it one way versus somebody who's 220 and six feet tall versus somebody who's, you know, 170 and 5'8". You know, they're going to have different ways of posing to make that person's body look better for them. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's so many different, I mean, yes, there's, you know, all the same poses, but we can hit things potentially differently, you know, with, with potential, you know, uh, you know, different variations, you know, that's why it's important that we, you know, shape it to the individual, you know, and some, some posing coaches, you know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, they, they just have to adapt. Um, most do very well in doing that. Some don't. No, right, and, and it's just like you have to hit it this way. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, like if the, if their good side is their right, you have to be able to work that transition into their right. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and again, you know. and I get certain, you know, I think I have to say natural organizations more so than NPCIBB at this point. You know, especially natural organizations. They ask for all sides. You know, I, I, I know a lot, you know, and yep. is your favorite side. And, and again, that's yeah. great, you know, because you can hit your stronger points in that case. Exactly. If, you're, if, you're, if you need to work all sides, then you know what? Learn how to do it. Make, again, learn how to do them from all angles. And, best, and even if it's not your best side, still try to get the trick that might be needed because you might need to hold something a certain way on your left versus your right to make certain things pop differently. And if you're not used to doing it, you're screwed because you just, that's a point maybe that, you know, because you, you just didn't know how to do a pose from a certain angle. Yeah. So like my good side is my left, right? My bad side, my right. <laughs> but you still got to work it. You do. It's, it's just one of those things where I find that, you know, again, some, especially the newbies in the sport, you know, I, I give them a little leeway. You know, they're new. You know, they're, they're still a learning how to work out, let alone, you know, how to hold a pose. You know, it's one I see more veterans, you know, almost like. It's like, you you should know how to pose by now. It's like, seriously, come on. Yeah. And again, I, I think that's, again, it's, I want to say over the last five years about, I've noticed posing coaching becoming much more of a, a serious business more people are taking yeah. much more interest in, and, and again, five years before that, you, you would hear about posing coaches, and you would hear about people, then you'd be fine. So, yeah, 
you know, we are glad to have you on the team. Hoping we can work with you and your some of your guys. You know, I know the season's winding. Actually, it's weird. I feel like seasons should be winding down right about now. But I also feel like we have so many more shows to come right now, just because the year got pushed to the end. Shifted. Yeah. Like, there's so many, like, yeah. somebody was saying, like, there's, like, one or two shows left. I'm like, no, there's not. There's, like, 20 shows left. They're, like, pushing all the way into the end of December this year, you know, really with shows. Yeah. I'm just like, you actually got a lot of time left of shows still coming up. So, I, again, I, I don't know really what we'll see actually go to these shows. You know, I've been looking at some websites that have post-show things, and I will say, you know, the bodybuilding maybe 10 guys in some of these shows right now. And I think some people, they just kind of be like, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to hold for this long or too many times things got adjusted. And I get that too, but we still have shows coming. You know, do you have any big things coming up for you for, you know, with coaching anybody for anything coming up recently or? Yeah. So I would say like, I have, I think two guys competing Next week or within the next two weeks, I have three guys competing at NPC Nationals. Um, I just recently had one guy compete at Masters Nationals. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, that was a, and then, what was that? That was a big show. <laughs> that, yeah. that That one and the, the other one before that, uh, huge show. So. Although, I, I saw the stage. It was carpet. Oh, ooh. Yeah, it was carpet carpet squares. That, Carp, yeah, that does. Ooh. I've never seen on on the stage. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, interesting. So it met an outside it, venue. Or was this an inside for masters? Inside. Was it? No. Inside? That's odd. Yeah, it it messed up his transition. So I was like, you don't have that flow that you need. Now you're like, I've got rug burn on my feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he messaged me, and I was like, really? <laughs> National level? Come on. You guys can do better. Well, you know what? You know, I've talked to... We had a... a, a the last program we did, I had uh, two guys who do the... Uh, two IPB pros that do classic physique. And, you know, they, they gave, like, you know, they're trying right now. You know, this is, like, kind of a last minute. A lot of the venues that they're using aren't regular venues that they've done stuff with. So it, it's kind of so much... Like, they're trying to figure it out all in the last minute, and I'm like, hopefully that one, <laughs> hopefully that one won't be on stage again, because I'm like, ooh, like, I don't, even like when I pose at home, I hate posing in a room with carpet, because I'm just like, I want to get rug burn, just trying to do things, sweeping yeah. around too much, so. Yeah, it's like trying to find the optimal, like, surface to pose on. Yeah, this is a whole new, you know, we're all in uncharted territories. Nobody thought this was, you know, who would have thought this is what 2020 would have turned into. But it's what yeah. we got. It's what we we're learning to deal with. And we, we go with it, you know? Yeah, and then I also do have, um, I think it was like, no, I have a few guys, com uh, ugh, not competing. Uh, I have a few guys doing off-season posing as well. And that's one of the big things that I try to, like, push mm -hmm. is like if you do off-season posing like that's going to help you so much because one like my big thing is you should be able to step on stage and be able to hit your poses like it's second nature right mm -hmm. so those guys who you know whether it's starting two to three months before you know your prep you know which is a good rule of thumb right but i i have guys who are you know not even competing to like two or three years from now but guys who might be competing like a year from now, right? But the thing for me is like, if, if you start, you know, adjusting to that mindset now, then you're way ahead of the game. You get your poses down, you can learn the transitions better, mm -hmm. then you have everything like that, yeah. right? And then it's like, hey, come at me, bro. Yeah. You know, that's one thing. Honestly, too, I always said, you know, Learning to pose, especially in the beginning for certain people, actually helps their workouts because if they don't know how to activate their lats, doing a lat pull down once you know how to activate your lats changes how you do a lat pull down forever. It really does. Like certain people, I'm like, they're like, I keep flexing them. Like you're not flexing anything <laughs> at all. Well, well, and trying, 
Just saying, trying to brush somebody to open their lats, like, that shit takes time. <laughs> like, it, it's, sometimes it might take people months to get their lats to open up. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes the right cues. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not magic. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I can try my best to give you the right cues, but it's a matter of scapular mobility, potentially getting work done from, like, a massage therapist mm-hmm. or, um, you know, other you know, mobility, um, techniques, but you know, it's certain cues and stuff like that, but it might take months, you know, potentially even, you know, like a lot of times I'll tell, um, you know, my clients to physically have like their significant other move them through their range of motion, mm-hmm. you know, and that's but, you know, you know, I want to, used to call it touch posing. Cause it's like, sometimes you need that physical push to actually learn how to move it. And if you don't know how to do it, it, it that's how you're going to learn how to do it. It's like, no, it's not. Move. Oh. Because once, once your body starts to feel how things move, you, you kind of learn. And that's, that's the way it needs to go. It's one of those great things. Well, sir, oh, yeah. I know you have a busy day and you have many other clients to deal with. Uh, I will let you go. Thank you for joining us on Dying It In. And uh, we appreciate it, man. Another time. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. You as well. Thank you very much. Have a great one.